So we are so far able to insert and read from a SQL database using a PCL on both Android and iOS, but our project is far from ready. So far, we're only reading from the table and being able to visualize it, but since we did that, we are no longer able to add new items because we haven't completed the entire navigation. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this and the next lecture. In this one, we're going to focus on Android, but beyond the navigation, we're also going to be taking advantage of what we have left to do and actually take a look at what the toolbar is inside of Android. So the toolbar is a very nice new item as of actually Android Lollipop, uh, which is Android 5.0 that can display a title just like we've been doing so far, but can also display certain elements such as a menu and some buttons that we can click to access different kind of functionality. So we're actually going to be doing that in this lecture. And I mentioned that this is only available on as, as of Android Lollipop, so that is the first thing that, that we have to make sure of, uh, that our project is actually built for Android Lollipop or higher. So I'm going to right click on the project, the Android project, click on options. I'm going to click on Android application and make sure that the minimum version is actually somewhere between Android 5.0 and above. So I'm actually going to be setting this to Android 6.0, the API level 23. I'm going to set the target version to be the automatic, that is uh, the API 23 as well. And I'm going to head back to general and make sure that the target framework is at use latest install platform, which in my case is higher than Lollipop, so everything is okay. And I can continue. The next thing that I have to do is set a theme for my Android project, so it kind of like refre reflects uh, material design a little bit better. So to be able to do that, what I have to do is come to the resources folder, find the values folder, and double click the strings.xml file. In here, I want to define a new style. Now I have a couple of strings, and these strings are being used inside of the application to display them, and we can we could change this anytime, but we are not really going to be using them what we are going to be using is a style. So I am going to define a style in here and I'm going to add a couple of things inside so the style reflects Android uh, material design a little bit better. First, I do need to set a name for the style which I'm just going to call app theme. Uh, I just have to set the name so I can access it further uh, inside of the application and I am going to set a parent. So uh, there is already a couple of strings that we can use to set the parent of this theme so it reflects those themes a little bit better and that is actually the material design. Uh, so I can set Android uh, colon and access theme dot material dot light for the light theme uh, additionally, I could access, uh, I could just delete this and just leave it in material, which would be the dark theme, or I could do light dot dark action bar in case I wanted a light theme, but with a dark action bar. Right now, I just want the light theme. Uh, I, and I could further customize this. I could, for example, set um, item uh, name, which is going to be equal to Android colon uh, status bar color and set this to be something uh, like I, I don't know I have a I have a color right here which is 97C93E and now the the Actually, I'm making a mistake in here. Let me just fix this like like this item. Okay, so now the theme will will tell the status bar color 
to be this one instead of the default one. But I, I don't plan to customize this any further. Uh, the only thing that I do want to do is uh, set an item in here and that is going to be name equals and the name is going to be Android colon window no title. I'm going to set this to true. This is going to tell the entire application because it's part of the theme to have no title inside of the window. So the window by default is going to have no title. And also for us to be able to use the toolbar instead of the default action bar, we have to set another item inside of this team that is going to be uh, called Android. It's going to be Android colon window, uh, window action bar. And in this case, we're going to set it to false. So we're no longer be go going to be using an action bar, we're going to be using a toolbar. And so now that we have this team, let me just copy the name of this team. Uh, I have to set it to the actual app. So let me just navigate to the properties folder where I can find the Android manifest.xml and right to the bottom I can find the source. So by default I see this uh, view which makes things a little bit easier uh, mainly but I do want to access the source and here I have an application definition which has a label which I actually can change uh, for, for it to to be something different when you, you see the application on the list on your device. But right now what I want to do is set the Android theme. So Android uh, colon theme, which is going to be equal to at to be able to access a style and the name is just going to be app theme. So there we have it, the application should now start using this theme along uh, all of the files, all of the layouts. So for example, if I were to reload, oh, this is the one from iOS, let me just uh, close the iOS project and I will just, for example, access the main.axml, which is one of the layouts that we have already available. And as soon as it loads, you can see how indeed the theme has changed it's now a more material design theme. There's no longer a title bar or a, a, an action bar because we said that we don't want a title. Uh, and well, it, it's better now, I, I think. Uh, there is something very important that we have to do so far. Our books activity, uh, where we are adding new books inside of a list is a list activity because we only wanted to list something. But there is something that we have to do this time. We have to add a toolbar and we cannot add a toolbar if we do not have the layout. So I'm actually going to change this back to an activity. Bear with me in here. I'm going to save this. Uh, it's okay for this error to appear, but I do want to head back to layout and add a new file that is going to be a new Android layout. And I'm going to call this um, book list. And inside of here, the first thing that I want to do is add a toolbar and I can search it inside of the toolbox, just like I would add anything else. And then I'm going to search for a list view and I'm going to add it as well. I of course have to change the ID. So I am going to call this book list view and the toolbar instead of toolbar one is going to be simply toolbar. Let's just call it toolbar. So now that we have this, uh, let me go back to the books activity and we now have to get the list and the toolbar. So let's just define a toolbar in here that is going to be just toolbar. And I also want a list view, which is going to be book list view. There we go. And so here after the on create, we actually have to set the content view of this activity, which is no longer a list activity. So we need to set a content view. And in here we can just access resource dot layout dot book list, which is right here. 
and now the book list AXML file is the content for this activity. So everything's going all right. Uh, the next thing is to get the toolbar. So find view by ID of type toolbar, and we can go uh, to resource.id.toolbar. And then the same thing for the book list view, which is going to be equal to find view by ID of type list view. And the resource dot ID is going to be book list view. So there we have it. Now we can change this list adapter, which is going to be coming instead of from this, it's going to be coming from book list view. And instead of list adapter it's just called adapter. So it's still the exact same adapter, it's still the exact same data. I could actually uh, copy this or cut this and make this available from outside of any method. Uh, for this, I will have to make this couple of elements static. Now let me try this again, static. And this one as well, static. So I can actually use the path.combine method. So there we have it, it's now a class level structure. And so now just the same way as we set this content view, we can set the toolbar. So there is a set tool set action bar method, uh, which is going to be very similar to the set content view. And notice how this is going to be asking for a toolbar, which we already have. So I can set toolbar in here. And the action bar actually has a title which we can set uh, to my books, for example, in this case. So now this activity or this view will actually have a title. Remember that we said that we don't want titles, but we are going to be adding an actual toolbar to this view and we're actually going to be setting a title. So this is going to be a view with a title and an action bar in the form of a toolbar. So let's go ahead and see how this is going. I'm just going to launch my application on my Android simulator to just show you how things are going right now. So here I have the application open and running and you can see how indeed the new material design system has been added to this layout. And now we can see the toolbar in here and the elements just that like we've been able to see them all this time. But now, because this is a toolbar, we can add new elements such as a plus icon so we can navigate to the page that will allow the user to add new books. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, to be able to add buttons to a toolbar, the functionality is that we can add a menu to the toolbar. And this menu is usually in the form of three dots that the user can access to see a couple of elements or as many elements as we want. But there is also a way of making these elements always visible in the toolbar without the needing to touch the menu icon. So that's exactly what we're going to do. But still, what we need to do first is go to the resources folder, right click on it and add a new folder that I'm going to call menu. In here, we're going to be adding all of the XML files that we need to define menus for any toolbar that we may eventually add. Right now we're only going to have one, but so we're going to right click on the menu, on the menu folder, and select add, select new item, and we are going to search for an XML file, or if you see the option available, which I think it's only available on Windows, you'll be able to select a menu element, either from Visual C Sharp, or you can go to Android and search for menu, and make sure that an XML file is going to be created. Now this file, I'm going to call it books because it's going to be the menu for the books activity. So once I click on that, I have this new file that is created automatically and by default, I am going to have one item that is going to allow the user to search for something. But that is not exactly what I'm looking for. What I want is an add button so I can change the ID to be action underscore add instead of search. I can set that this is always shown or I could change this to be that it is only shown when there is a space available. So this functionality will actually work uh, on a way that the add button can be displayed inside of the menu 
if there is no space available for the button to be in the toolbar itself or it can be displayed inside of the toolbar if there is a space available. So you could always sell, set it to always, so it is always available. But I like to set it to if room. So if there is a space available for this particular element to be displayed in the toolbar, it will be displayed. If not, it will be inside of the menu. The text, well, it's not going to be displayed as text eventually, it's going to be displayed as an icon, but let's just say that the, the text is going to be new book. There we go. And instead of setting an action view class, we will have to set an icon. So to be able to set an icon, we actually need to add an icon to each of these elements that, that we have in here. So we have an HDPI element and an MDPI. We have to add a, a, the same icon in different sizes so we are able to have a very good looking application so it doesn't look pixelated. I happen to have the icons on my desktop so I am going to open my file explorer and I'm going to navigate to my desktop. Let me make this just a little bit smaller so I can drag the elements into my project. And in here I have some folders that already are defined depending on the screen size that I'm going to be using. So for example, I have this, let me just change the name by the way, uh, this icon for HDPI screens. So I can change the name to us and I can drag it to the folder in my project that ends in HDPI and it will be added and it will be available in here as soon as it is copied. And I can continue to do so, so I can, uh, for example, the next one is an MDPI and I can search for my folder that is MDPI. I want to rename the icon that is inside here, so it is called Ath. And I can just drag and drop in the MDPI folder inside of my project. And so on and so forth, so you don't have to see me do this all the way, just, you know, I will come back once I have added all of this. And so once I have an app icon for different sizes for each of these folders, uh, make sure that all of the icons are named the exact same way. They are just different sizes. Uh, I can return to my books.xml file and in here I can set Android colon icon. And this is going to be equal to at uh, this is not inside of Drupal, so I will just set this to Ath. So the name of my icon is Ath, it's just going to be taking it from the resources. It may or may not be inside of a Drupal folder. If it is inside of a Drupal, you will need to add that before writing the name of the file, which in this case is Ath. Uh, but you can just go ahead now and save this. And let's go ahead and navigate back to the box activity to start using that XML file. Although now that I think about it, we may need to add the beginning of the name of this folder. So uh, Android has to know which folders we're going to be using. So I'm just going to start writing MIP map uh, forward slash and add. So this way we don't have to add HTPI and DPI because Android is smart enough to know that this is the way that we are going to be defining which icon is shown in which screen. So HDPI screens will be using the icons inside of this folder when XXHDPI screens are going to be the ones in this folder, so on and so forth. So just make sure to, to add that or in case all of these folders are inside of another folder, write the name of that folder first. Okay, so back to the box activity. Inside of the box activity, we need to override a couple of methods so we actually can set that menu to be inside of the activity. So far in here, we have gotten the toolbar from the book list layout that we have. We have the list view and we have set the adapter for the list view, so everything is working okay. But we have to override first the on create options menu method that you will be able to find. And this method is going to be called 
when we create the menu for the toolbar. So before the base method is called, we actually have to inflate the menu inside of the toolbar, or in this case, the action bar that we, are, that we have set. Uh, to be able to do this, we have to use menu inflator that you can find in here, which is a property of the activity. So it already exists and it has a method that is called inflate. And this is simply going to request us which, which, which XML file it is going to be using to inflate the menu itself. So in here, we can go ahead and write resource, resource, uh, let me write this correctly, resource, resource, there we go, dot menu, remember that we created that menu folder, so here we have menu, and inside of the menu we have this XML that is called books, and then it's going to be requesting a menu, we simply pass the menu that we're receiving in the argument, and it's that simple, we have inflated the menu now. So now the icon, the plus icon, will appear inside of the toolbar, that easy. But how do we know when that icon is pressed, where that item inside of the menu is pressed? Let's go ahead and now override the on options item selected, which is actually going to be executed every time one of the elements inside of the menu is selected or clicked. But we have an issue here. This is going to, to be executed every time any of the elements is clicked. Right now we only have one element, so we don't have much of a problem. But how can we evaluate if the item that was actually pressed is the one that we want? So let's go ahead and head back to the books.xml and evaluate the options that we have. We have a text, which is actually going to be our, cho uh, our choose. So we are going to copy the text that is inside of the item, head back to books activity, and that text is the one that we are going to evaluate. So if the text inside of this item is equal to the one that we want, then we can start talking about what we are going to do. In this case, we are going to evaluate the item that we're receiving in the argument, has a title, title formatted, but this title formatted is a type of Android, it's a Java object. But thankfully, we can just call to list to be able to access it as a .NET string object and evaluate if it is equal to the value that we just copied, which is in this case, new book. So we are evaluating that, and if it is, we can go ahead and do the things that we have to do. Let me see what's wrong. Oh, I'm, I'm calling the to list. It's not to list. It has to be to string. So there we have it. Now we're evaluating string against string. And in here, all we have to do is navigate to, to the new book, or is it called main activity? It's just called main activity. So let's go ahead and create an intent that I'm going to call intent that is going to be equal to a new intent. And in this case, we're going to set this as a context and we're going to be navigating to a type of type of main activity. Main activity, there we go. And we can just call start activity, which is going to request an intent that we already have in here. And that this is going to happen when the new book item inside of the menu is clicked. So we are now going to be able to navigate and add and everything. But before we test this out, I want to do something else. So let me just head back to the books activity where we have the, I'm sorry, the main activity where we are adding new books to the list. And I want to navigate back every time a new book has been successfully added to the database. Or rather, I would like to show a toast. Um, you know, one of those little notifications that are displayed in the bottom of the screen. So in here, I'm just going to do toast dot make text. And in here, I'm going to set this as the context. And I can set 
actually I'm going to set a string in here that is going to be uh, the new book was created and there we go and then we have to specify a duration which is set by toast length and I'm just going to set this to, to, to short let me change this to short it's a small text and then we can call the show method to show the toast so there we have it let me just run this again to show you the entire functionality of the application now that it is complete so it is going to run on my Android emulator there it goes it's launching and it's running and I have my books in here and in this case the icon looks very uh, well it's white and it's over a gray area but we could change the value of this and you, you remember that we have that style that we created inside of the strings.xml so you could change the color of this bar right now we do kind of like see this little icon in here I don't know if you can see it but I can and, and just click on it and, and you can see it a little bit better and I actually forgot something so it's a good thing that this happened that I tested this it's not supposed to be Android text it's supposed to be Android title so that's why I got a no reference exception uh, because there was no title there was a text but there was no title so let's try this again and see this time it should work I'm sorry for that while this runs by the way I have already come back to the strings.xml file and added a color primary, a color primary dark, a color accent and a status bar color items to the style so now the application should use these colors which are blue colors and for example this primary is going to use a blue for most of the elements inside of the theme the accent is for those elements that we have to accent in this case it's the same color and I've also set this to be the color for the status bar so the status bar is going to have the exact same color as the toolbar so it will look a little bit better in my opinion and I also added this color primary dark for when the user has set the theme to be dark we already set some value in there as well so here is the app running again I, you can see the status bar color that is now different now the the status bar that rather the toolbar is using the color that I set and now we can easily see that add button and when we click on it now we don't see any errors and we can start adding new books and for example I could add a new book in here that is just um, book and let's just name this uh, seven I don't know what uh, number I was at and let's just call this author quickly just to to show that there is actually a toast being added inside here so there we have it the new book was created and as soon as I hit back I can see hopefully that the book is not being added so there is something that we have to do uh, so right now we're only populating the list one so let's uh, stop this from running and head back to the books activity and notice how so far let me close this so far we're only reading the table from the database from the onCreate method and that is why when there are new elements we don't see the new elements because the onCreate method was already called we're just navigating back we're not creating the view again so let's go ahead and override another method that is going to allow us to do exactly that uh, to be able to retrieve the database not only when it is created but every time we return to the view and this is the on restart method which exactly is being called every time the view is being navigated to again for example through the back button that we just did so in this case we could be getting the database through this so I could just copy and paste this inside of here uh, let me cancel um, <laughs> my god let me try this again so paste this so instead of the on restart we're going to assign the books list to whatever is in the database again so we're going to read again and then we're going to create the adapter and go, we're going to set the adapter to the list so let's try this one more time 
let's add a new item and this time automatically when we head back from the layout where we are adding new elements we should be able to see that new element inside of the list. So here we are in the application we can see that it was added previously we go ahead and add a new one let's just write something that makes no sense in here uh, click on save we see the toast in here we head back and automatically without us needing to restart the application this item has been added so there you go we have now an android application that is entirely using uh, sqlite from a pcl that has a nice toolbar a nice add button and we are navigating back and forth from the add new element to the list of elements